Welcome back. There is a live look outside from the Oregon coast, our In It Spanish Head Resort Hotel camera in Lincoln City. Thanks for watching Afternoon Live. Bird watching continues to be a popular hobby in the Northwest, and September in particular is prime time, and it can be fun for the whole family. Here to tell us why, we welcome from the Bird Alliance of Oregon, Joe Liebezite. Thank you for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Tell me about why September is such a great time for even beginners to head outside and mm -hmm. see some amazing things. September is uh, the core of fall migration. So this time of year, a lot of the birds that were here breeding for the year or further up north breeding are starting to make their way down to their southern um, uh, wintering grounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there certain areas in our region that are specific or can you kind of catch different things depending on if you're in the valley, toward the coast? Depends on what kind of birding you want to do. Mm -hmm. If you want to look for uh, waterfowl, you might want to go to areas that have more marshland, okay. somewhere like uh, Ridgefield uh, National Wildlife Refuge sure. or Salvi Island. If you want to go to see um, birds up on um, the buttes in town, you can go to uh, Mount Tabor or uh, Powell, Powell, uh, Powell Butte. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Gosh, we have so many great places to yeah. check out. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some specific things. I mean, first off, we'll have to talk about Portland's very famous sure. Swifts. Mm -hmm. They're really kind of in the peak of their season right now? Yeah, right now is the, is the, the peak of uh, swift migration. Um, this is the Vox's swift. There are birds that breeds in the Northwest. Okay. And they're making their way down to eventually to Central America and Southern North, uh, South America. So they have a long way to go. Wow. And one of the places they really like to flock to and roost in at night to stay away from predators and to keep warm is the Chapman Elementary School chimney. And that is super popular, like the entire lawn will be packed with spectators. Yes, we've had as many as 3,000 people looking up in the sky at this amazing wildlife spectacle. And it's a great way to connect the public with nature and to yeah. conservation, all of the work we do. And are people still actually counting the birds as they're coming and going? Because that can kind of tell us some environmental mm -hmm. cues, right? Yeah, we actually have uh, a community science or citizen science project where we count the Swiss every night. We've been doing it for about 15, 15 years. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we have someone up on the top of the hill at Chapman every night counting the birds with a clicker, counting them in blocks of 10 or 100. I was going to say, how do you possibly <laughs> count all of these? Uh, yeah, like, like <laughs> wildlife biologists all over the world, counting uh, herds or flocks of animals and birds is, 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 is an art is as much yeah. as a science. And so you do the best you can. But the main thing is you can see a trend across time. And there is some error in the number. But sure. You know. OK, uh, let's talk about the next example for us. Thrush, is that a type of bird that we can see locally here? Yeah, there are a different number of types of thrush. Some okay. of the most common one is the American robin, which everyone knows. But okay. there's also one, things like the Swainson's thrush, which is a uh, uh, what they what we call a neotropical migrant, which goes all the way down to Central America to winter. They're a little bit more cryptic, um, harder to see. But okay. if you look down in the uh, the understory in places like uh, Oaks Bottom or Mount Tabor or Smith and Bybee, you're going to see some of those this time of year. Interesting. And then along the coast, these are really popular, those sandpipers. They are really, really cute, too. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of different species of sandpiper as well. I think in this photo here, you see western sandpipers, okay. a really small bird, as well as Dunlin. And again, they're making these really long distance migrations, and they really depend on estuaries on our coast for stopping over eating, getting some fat stores on their body before they make their way further oh, south. Oh, OK, that makes sense. And then snow geese will be arriving not not quite yet for us though yeah a lot of the waterfowl won't be getting here in big numbers until late october early november but the uh, snow goose is one that winter that breeds up in the arctic okay and um, they'll be coming down here in, in um you know in about a month or so and you can see them on savi island it's a great place you can see you know tens of thousands of them all at once that is so cool and yeah. you've been interested in birds your entire life I've been interested in birds my entire life uh, one thing i do want to say uh, um, part of our conservation work is we have a program called Lights Out, and a lot of birds migrate at night, Okay. and they are attracted to the lights in our sky. Mm. And so one thing we wanna do, and you can be part of our Lights Out program, I, I uh, uh, recommend folks look at our Bird Alliance website. You can learn tips of using down pointing lights, turning off your outside lights uh, this time of year, yeah. between September 19th and October 19th, if you really want people to keep their lights down, you can see more stars at night, Sure. and it saves energy too. That makes a lot of sense and it helps the wildlife too. Thank you so much for stopping by. It was great chatting with you. You're welcome. We'll have more information on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this.